a gente sempre achou que podia dizer qual era o lugar da mulher. People can't even understand what it is to be a woman. What's your diet like? What's your schedule like? There is no time to think if it hurt or not. It's to react back. They hit you once, you hit them twice. I don't need to rely on the, the guy. You know, I can handle myself. Like, I want people to know me as, like, someone who trains, who does jiu-jitsu, but I, and then, you know, I also am a cop. There's a totally difference between good and then being the best of the best. We need each other more than we don't. Yeah. Sem dúvida, o papel da mulher na nossa sociedade evoluiu muito no último século, mas poucas atividades ou poucas profissões desafiam tanto essa ideia do sexo frágil quanto a luta. E se durante muito tempo as grandes referências do universo das artes marciais eram homens, hoje eles dividem o palco ou o tatame com elas. What triggered this passion for fighting? Passion for fighting. Um, well, specifically Muay Thai. I was introduced to it around when I was studying in my university. I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology, so I was working in the lab for from like 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. One of my friends introduced me to Muay Thai at a gym, and I always wanted to try martial arts, and it was really uncomfortable. If you'd have a bag, please shadow box. Get a partner in the bag. 30 left kick, 30 right kick. Hurry up, hurry up, let's go, guys, right away, let's go. Turn that body, turn that body, turn that body. Most mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and physically challenging. I couldn't throw a punch. I couldn't do one pull up. I couldn't throw a kick. I just couldn't defend myself. If you're not used to reacting if somebody hits you, right, it's just not natural. Why did you keep going? If it was this I, uncomfortable... I was really, um, I was really up for the challenge. I really, really, really wanted to know how to fight back. I've practiced Muay Thai in the past, nothing like you do. And one thing I remember is how different women and men were treated in the world of Muay Thai. What is that like for you? Well, I started Muay Thai in the United States. Um, yes, there are biases yes. um, on how people or Americans might view women fighters when they step in the ring. Um, in the beginning, like 15, 20 years ago, when I would show up to local Muay Thai fights, the heckling towards women were different, right? The way they cheered for women, it could be, you know, like, even sexualized. Um, you know, fetishized. Yeah, fetishized. Um, or maybe it was their time to go to the bar to um, get a drink when women will go, be up to fight. Um, they would just expect women to like wail, you know. And even when you 
hear of commentators, you know, like in the local scene or even on TV, on professional fights, they refer to them as girls, right? They use the term girls. We're over 18, that's a woman, right? But like with men, it's just like, Man, that's a tough man. They fight like a man. They're strong like a bull. You know, it's all of those little things that build into the subconscious of, you know, how we view female fighters. What was it like the first time you actually got hurt? I actually got hurt. Like that you felt pain, that you're like, what am I doing? Oh, okay. Like a minor concussion. Yeah. I didn't question it. Really? Yeah, I didn't question it actually. I just wanted to know when I could train again. <laughs> yeah, like, um, especially right now, I'm doing like a training camp for ADCC, and so it's like every session, I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like underneath some giant man, like in bottom out, just like, <laughs> why have I chosen it? Or like when someone's like sweaty rash guards, like in my face. Oh like my, this. yeah. Or a, a, a sweat one in my eye, or like in my eyeball. And we're not really selling this. <laughs> I did Muay Thai for a little bit too, and I just always loved those kind of really physical sports um, for whatever reason. Maybe it's my personality type. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoy like the fighting element. I don't, you know, like really scrapping with someone is like my favorite part of it. But yeah, like it can be a weird adjustment. Like you have to think I've done it since I was a, a child. So it's yeah. been normal to me to do something like physical like that. How has that affected your routine, your daily life? What's your diet like? What's your schedule like? Well, my diet isn't the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try and eat healthier because then you just feel better in training. Yeah. Um, but I do take the fact that I train a lot means that I can eat more, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, which I enjoy. And then, yeah, like I wouldn't, I'm not really a party type of person. I don't really go out much. How many days a week do you train? Every day, except for the weekend. Every day. Yeah, yeah. I love training. I want to be doing it all the time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. You know, in my job, if I have a big shoot or if I have a big meeting and, God forbid, I suck at it, it goes really bad, Yeah. you know, I'll take a shower, I'll punish myself emotionally for a couple of weeks and I'll move on. For you, if you're in a world tournament and you suck, you get really hurt. <laughs> How do you manage the expectation? How do you manage the anxiety? How do you manage the fear? Fear can be a really crippling, paralyzing thing. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Um, so I don't really worry about getting hurt so much. You um, don't? Not really, because it's, it's different. Like, I'm not getting punched, you know? Like, yeah. if anything hurts, I just, I just tap and it's over. For me, what hurts is, like, is losing. Uh, or, like, um, getting embarrassed, like, losing in a really embarrassing way. Your ego's hurt. Yeah, my ego hurts. And then it's on the internet. And then it gets made into a highlight, like a highlight reel on the internet. And then I keep seeing it everywhere. And that's a bit, that's a bit sad. I'm not, I don't really worry about, about getting hurt. Like, I understand it is a risk. I could get really seriously hurt, potentially. But I, I can't think like that because otherwise I'd never compete. Because mm -hmm. that's a normal thing to be afraid of. But if I think like, oh, I'm worried about getting hurt, that's not, I shouldn't compete. Trauma was sort of normal for me. It was chaos was a part of my life early on. And so that's something that, um, so when I finally went into, you know, a dojo where they would teach you the proper way to deal with violence, um, it really became an escape for me. I used to be a lot more reckless uh, when I was younger, and now I'm a lot more smarter and, and safer when I, when I approach things, especially after getting my my nose smashed in four different places and getting surgery and stuff, even though, you know, on the flip side of it, it was good that that happened because I got um, 
I had a deviated septum, so I couldn't breathe. And so the surgery helped me, yeah. but it was a very traumatic experience otherwise. So anyway. What triggered that interest for fighting, for martial arts? There was a, a lot of things going on just uh, growing up that uh, the best course of action for me and just, um, you know, my uh, my mom that was raising us, uh, she made sure to keep us very busy because um, idle hands are the devils. And so you want to make sure that your, um, your kids are always, um, busy with activities. So, um, I got put into martial arts as a young kid. Um, and I still, you know, sometimes got into trouble and things like that, but, uh, but it really did help, uh, steer me in the right direction. So that's kind of how it all started. Historically speaking, women were always viewed as sort of like a fragile gender. Mm -hmm. And more and more, we see women actually seeking self-defense classes, learning how to fight, basically to, to protect themselves from you know, the brutality that we encounter once we walk out that door. Uh, how has this evolution been? from your perspective, this uh, embrace from the female community, for lack of a better expression, of something you're so passionate about, which is fighting. Self-defense is not only defined with somebody putting a weapon to your face. It's about how you're navigating the streets when you're being catcalled, right? If you're walking up the stairs, taking the subway, is there gonna be a hand that's just going to randomly brush up? on the side of my leg. You know, we carry bags or groceries or, you know, our work bags with us. Standing on the train, if somebody stands a little too close and you feel a groin behind you, those things happen a lot. But then when that happens, we tense up. And then we also don't want to talk about it after because all this trauma and disrespect that we get, we then compartmentalize it and store it away. Right? We don't want to talk about it because of shame. We don't want to talk about it because people might gaslight us and ask, like, well, were you standing too close to a certain area? Or, Blame the victim. Yes. Or it's like you question it first, right? Well, what were you doing in that space? What were you right? wearing? Yeah, what were you wearing? Did you wear shorts under your skirt? You know, things like that. Self-defense isn't only about learning certain things and then keeping it for yourself to look out for yourself. If somebody is uncomfortable, right, and you, they physically look uncomfortable and they don't feel safe, you can stand a little closer to them, make sure, you know, you can smile at them, give them a gentle smile, let them know, you know, I, I see you, I'm here for you too. And once they feel their own power when they hit mitts or they hit something, it's like a light bulb comes off. People have never felt themselves in their own power. And I have to say, like, women hit so hard, right? I've seen women in their 50s and 60s throw knees and they're really hard and you know they joke like oh it's just a lifetime of built-up trauma right it's incredible how empowered and confident they are The idea and the stigma when you apply for the police department and throughout the years that it's always been male dominated. But then it encourages you when you see women, um, family, friends that are doing it and it, it just pushes you to do it. And I was really, my mom was proud and I was very proud to do it. I think the common misconception is that maybe we're not built for it or maybe we're not strong enough. Maybe we're, you know, it's not for us. It's a man's job. But I think that we've proven otherwise. Always thought of myself as a jiu-jitsu fighter before I thought of myself as law enforcement, like as a cop. Like I want people to know me as like someone who trains, who does jiu-jitsu, but I, and then, you know, I also am a cop. I feel like there are parallels in like, jiu-jitsu, like training and being a cop. Like it helped me like not only physically getting stronger, but also my mental state. It helped me like whenever I feel stressed or like 
um, I've been working so long, so many hours, like I want to train. Like even if I have no sleep, I just want to go to train. You know, it just helps me find a sense of peace. Like it helped me figure out like a schedule, time management. So it helped me become dedicated. It helped me become disciplined. Jiu-Jitsu 100%, it, it gave me confidence. So I implore all women to train and to, you know, be self-aware that you are going to be tested on this job or even in general, you know, a lot of victims are mostly women. So training will give you that confidence and hopefully you can defend yourself and you won't be looked at as the victim anymore. You know, when you're walking in the street, no one knows what you know. So if you're being tested or if they're, you know, judging you just by how you look, really you have like your secret thread is your training. So I, I think all women should definitely train. This is one that like really you all blend. Like you all turn neutral on the mat. So I really don't think that should be something anymore that anyone should really look at. It, it, it's a blend of the people together. How does it feel to be tough? Tough? I mean, I'm still working on it, but. <laughs> But it feels good. I mean, you know, yeah, it's good. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I could be tougher, but little by little. <laughs> well, there is a whole debate nowadays about how unfair it would be for a male to compete with a female. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to get into the genetics aspect of it, but you're basically, you're not competing with them. No. But you're training with them. And quite often, you're kicking their ass, you know? And like, one of the things that I learned when I was trying to, you know, practice jujitsu was that you need to, first and foremost, be comfortable with discomfort. How uncomfortable is it to train with someone who's clearly a lot stronger than you? Mm -hmm. Not a better fighter, but just physically stronger than you. Uh, yeah, it's definitely difficult. Um, I find that especially for female uh, athletes in this sport, it's sort of, it can be very draining to train with men all day, every day, especially when they outweigh by like, what, 20 to 40 pounds or something. That can be very draining and tiring. I'm lucky that my training partners are very good at tailoring the rounds with me. I don't go with people above a certain size, especially right now in camp. Yeah. Um, it's a, it'd be a little bit different if I wasn't in camp for a tournament. Um, but right now, like, I try and limit, like, the size of my training partners. Um, my male, I mostly have male, well, at the moment, it's pretty much all bar couple girls. Does it make it easier when you train with a girl, when you compete against a girl? Um, I wouldn't, I mean, it's, it's different. When I compete with women, they have a different style a lot of the time because they're not as physical, they're not as strong in their upper body. Maybe they're more, like, leg dominant as opposed to upper body dominant. Mm -hmm. um, more flexible in comparison to men and things like that. So those elements will come up and that can be a bigger difficulty to sort of deal with in a lot of ways. But then obviously, if the man is also high level, he's not going crazy with me because it's not beneficial to him, it's not beneficial to me. Um, they'll usually tailor back the role, try not to use strength and roll with me skillfully. And then there's other guys who I can, you know, be, yeah. if, even if they're going full out, um, but they're usually a lower belt to me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's different, you know? There's a lot of benefits to training with the guys, but yeah, it'd be ideal if I had more female training partners, and hopefully in time that'll happen. Um, but on the body, it is very tiring. So sometimes I'm like, I can't do as much as you guys today. I am dying. So. Uh, my mother was not happy. <laughs> she was not happy at all. She's like, you're my daughter. She is somebody else's daughter. This is everyone cheering you on. Like, everybody around cheering you both on. It's like you guys are animals. I love fighting on shows. So you have, like, um, like events and things like that. It's on a big stage. The crowd comes to watch you. Um, it's different from tournaments where there's, like, several mats going at the same time. It's just one mat, and everyone's watching that one mat. And that's my favorite way to compete, because it, it does feel more 
more like a performance. Oh, my mom was pissed and my twin sister was pissed. They were like, you can't do like soccer or like dance or something. I was like, no, that's not competitive, competitive enough for me. My mom's like, but you're like smaller. Like, I don't want you getting hurt. And I was like, but mom, that's the beauty in it. Like everyone underestimates like the small person, right? Like, and then when I come over and I'm like swinging and kicking them like in the face, they're like, and it's amazing. It feels so good. My aunts and like my father and stuff. My father's always ringside if he needs to be, you know, if he yeah. could be. Um, my sisters are always there. They get really nervous. Um, my partner gets really nervous, but they just come to accept it, and then they have learned to love the sport as much as I have. You don't want to win in a way that's boring because people don't enjoy it, and you can see that, you can feel that from the crowd as well. So my favorite way of competing is on a stage, on a show. I vividly remember the fight you won and you kept saying, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Who the best? I'm the best. Who the best? I'm the best. Obviously, to do what you do, uh, the physical preparation is um, key. It's fundamental. Mm -hmm. But tell me about the mental preparation. I also noticed that there, there's a lot of shit talk in, in the UFC, in the MMA, in martial arts. But you seem to have uh, become a symbol of calm, collected, focused, centered. What is that exercise like, that, that emotional exercise? Yeah, it's, um, it's lots of uh, help on part of my um, fiance, Pat Berry coach, you know, head coach. Uh, my other coaches, they keep me very centered. Um, but it really boils down to, well, yeah, family, friends, all that stuff. And there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Um, maybe one day I'll write a book on it because I feel like I could, there's so many things that I do um, from like ice baths to journaling to like breathing. Um, at the end of the day, though, I start, where it all starts is like my spirit. So if I'm, if my relationship with God is, is in the right place and I'm am doing things for the right reason and I have like discernment and my heart is in is correct then everything else will fall into place and then from there it's just you know um training and stuff but it all starts with like you know getting away in my prayer closet and having that good relationship uh with the most high I always knew that I was like good and most of the times anything that I tried I was at least pretty decent at or good, but it wasn't until I decided to actually make the decision to be the best and commit to that. It wasn't until I took that journey and made that decision that I knew that I was going to be the best in the world. So mm -hmm. th there's a totally difference between good and then being the best of the best. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC Strawweight champion of the world, Todd Rose Namayunas! You were so focused. Before the fight started, you were standing over there, and as Bruce Buffer was saying your name, you were saying to yourself, I'm the best. I'm the best. I am the best. <laughs> In the past, you've been vocal about having gone through sexual abuse and other types of abuse. Um, one question is, why did you decide to, to be open about something that is so private? And how does it feel for you to know that your experience, the fact that you've become the successful, beautiful, powerful woman after the trauma you've been through. How do you think that can serve as, as an example for girls out there that are feeling defeated, that are feeling traumatized, that, that are feeling weak, you know, today? For me, it was more cathartic than anything, but mm -hmm. I realized that it, uh, it helps other people, uh, but I'm helping myself while helping other people because um, I can be an example of like, you can go through stuff like that and then you can come out on the other side. You don't have to have this like negative view of the whole world. Like just because something negative happened to you, 
um, they're still good in the world. You can still find love. You can still um, find peace. You can still find contentment. But I mean, it does. It is a daily effort, and it is something that um, you know it 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 takes a lot of patience and love yourself. Like you have to open up your own heart, um, especially. And that can be the hardest thing to do sometimes when when you have been hurt. So um, the bigger heart that you can have, the better. das maiores referências no mundo no universo do box. Essa academia já existe desde o início dos anos 30, desde o início do século passado. Ela mudou de endereço algumas vezes. Em 1987, foi a primeira vez em que eles permitiram a entrada de uma mulher aqui. Hoje, mais de 400 mulheres é, praticam boxe aqui nessa academia. Isso aqui já foi cenário do Touro Indomável, do Martin Scorsese, e de uma série de outros filmes, outras séries, é, realmente... Uma das referências mais, eu não uso essa palavra com frequência, icônicas desse universo, desse esporte. Ah, um detalhe. Sabe quem já treinou aqui? Muhammad Ali. feeling that you were good at it no. when but when did your coach when did the people you were working with realize that you had potential what's so funny is that as i'm start as i'm training and i guess i'm getting better i still had no knowledge of me fighting like that was not a thing you Got know it. and i remember being in the gym and a friend of mine named pj he was like oh like you should you know like you should try it for the golden glove and i'm like no That was me in the finals and my first Golden Gloves. But I'm also falling in love with the sport. Got it. You know, <laughs> it's funny because sometimes, like, on my way to the gym, I will be, you know, thinking about, like, the combinations or, like, I'll be looking around, I'll be like, shh, 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 <laughs> you know, like, because I'm trying to figure it out in my head and express it and things like that. So Has it gotten easier or harder since that first fight? Boxing is not easy at all, right? I just think that you just get better as an individual. You know, your skills increase. 
you know, you start learning more stuff. You start, not only that, but you start creating your own style. You start figuring things out. But your competition get harder. You know, your tests get harder. And you just start seeing who you are as, as, a, as a person. Were you afraid of, to be very blunt, getting punched? You're a beautiful, rightfully so vain woman. Oh, thank you. Like, were you scared of, like, messing up your face or it sounds like a superficial question right but you get where i'm coming yeah, from. yeah i understand it i don't think that i really thought about it in that way at first like i wasn't really paying attention to it at first and then in reality like i'm not really like a girly girl yeah you know like i've always been kind of like tomboyish so you know with wrestling and doing stuff like that so i wouldn't consider myself like oh my god you know yes. and plus too like i come from my era in time where like you know like fights are always happening and it's not to say that i been in so many fights, but I've fought before, yes. you know, and stuff like that, or been or been in uh, little altercations. Whether it's, but well, you, it's, you, it's never been because of me. It's yeah. always, you know, because you always have that friend that's a loud mouth, and you're like, come on, girl. W would you say, growing up, you were in a way surrounded by a controlled chaos, so that intimidated you less? when it comes to fighting? I think that when you're from certain areas, when you're from certain places, when you grow up a certain way, you kind of have an understanding. Fighting for me wasn't like outside and I'm fighting all the time, because that's not my personality. Like yeah. I don't believe in like hitting people and things like that, so I'm more of a defensive person. Like if you hit me, then I'm gonna hit you back. You're not only throwing punches, but you're getting hit. You know, like when you get hit, it affects you as well. So you kind of train day in and day out in order to like sustain being hit, getting hit, moving, throwing punches. It's like, it's like trying to rub your stomach, pat your head, and like do jumping jacks at the same time. What has becoming a successful boxer done to the woman you are outside of the gym? outside of the ring. Looking at the before and after of boxing, how has that changed you as a woman? I would say that I'm not really an attention-hungry person. Like, I don't really like to be in the forefront of things. You know, I prefer to, like, you know, do things in the back because I don't really like the attention I get. I have anxiety. The limelight. Yeah. Right, you know? But even with that being said, when I'm walking to the ring and or when I'm getting the ring, like, it all goes away. It's so weird to me. I don't no longer feel that way. As soon as I get in, there's, like, everything just, like, disappears. It's like, I know what I'm here for and you know like I guess the confidence in knowing what I'm yeah. capable of also um, is a thing you get loved by so many people and so many people support you I think that kind of helps with being so anxious or so like no I don't I don't want to do this Olho para minha vida, algumas das vozes mais influentes, com certeza, vieram de mulheres. Né? E talvez por isso eu sempre tenha tido essa vontade de é, contar uma história é, pelo olhar feminino, com mulheres como protagonistas. De cara, eu sabia que eu não queria que essa história fosse sobre o sexo frágil. Eu queria achar um ângulo onde a mulher é dona do próprio umbigo, é dona do próprio destino. Eu queria mulheres fortes, mulheres determinadas, mulheres singulares. E que tivessem escolhido para a própria vida uma posição de, de poder, de autonomia de independência. You have a group of women who are going through the same thing and who are understanding of, you know, how we got here, how we trying to get here. We need each other more than we don't. I don't need to rely on the, the guy. You know, I can handle myself and be proud of that, confident. And it's now I'm more of a thinker than I was before. We do get tested more often than, you know, if you see a, a bigger guy. We're not, maybe not as intimidating, 
but then it comes down to training. Like, you might not look like intimidating, but then when you show them what you know, and you know, you put your, your training out there, that's it, then they put their money where their mouth is. No final das contas, eu posso falar sobre um monte de coisa, mas para mim fica muito claro que a gente sempre achou que podia dizer qual era o lugar da mulher. O lugar da mulher atrás de um homem, o lugar da mulher é um lugar de silêncio, um papel secundário, o lugar da mulher é na cozinha. Por mais que isso possa soar como um clichê, a verdade é que o lugar da mulher é onde ela quiser que seja. Né? O lugar da mulher é onde ela, onde ela bem entende. Esse respeito não pode mais ser ignorado, não deve ser mais ignorado. Tomara que eu faça mais alguns episódios é, focados em mulheres no volante, não só no, no banco do carona. Eu acho que o estigma ainda holds até hoje, não importa como as mulheres vão ser society. It really does help with social media and, and TV and, and showing that women, MMA fighters, martial arts, um, judo, jiu-jitsu, all different types of martial arts. It's just up and coming. These women are showing and they're doing great and everyone's cheering for them. So all of the women should be proud to step up to the plate and, and take a stand. If we can come together and create something, we become a little bit, we become much stronger. Do cops eat donuts every morning? Uh, <laughs> But I know that my precinct actually needs more bagels. <laughs> <laughs> the dream? Uh, just to retire and enjoy the rest of my life, you know? Well, keep winning, but don't get hurt. <laughs> we'll try very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Entre Mundos. Apoio 